Okay, so we already know that a complex number Z equals A plus IB can be expressed in polar form as Z equals R outside of cos theta plus I sine theta with R being the magnitude of Z. And if I raise Z to the nth power, raise the complex number to the nth power, we get R by cosine of theta plus I sine theta all raised to the nth power and applying my index law and uh, expanding the index into the bracket into the brackets I get r to the power of n by cosine theta plus i sine theta to the power of n okay but now also by de Moivre's theorem de Moivre's theorem We've covered De Moivre's theorem in a previous video, and I'll leave a link to that in the description. And you can link to it in the top right hand corner as well. De Moivre's theorem states that a complex number raised to the nth power can be expressed as r to the power of n by cosine of the nth multiple of its original angle plus i by sine of the nth multiple of its original angle. So if I tie these two expressions together, this will be very helpful for me when it comes to working out multiple angle identities of sine and cosine. Okay, so we can do this by, let's write on the left hand side, r to the power of n by cosine of theta plus i sine theta all to the power of n is equal to, on the right hand side, r to the nth power by the cosine of the nth multiple of the angle plus i by sine of the nth multiple of the angle. The r to the n's will cancel out and I'm left with cos theta plus i sine theta to the nth power is equal to cosine to the nth multiple of the angle plus i by sine to the nth multiple of the angle. So in order to express the multiple angle of cosine in terms of powers of cosine, all I have to do is equate the real part of the expansion cosine theta plus i sine theta to the nth power. Let's call this equation 1. And to find the sine of the multiple angle all I have to do is to gather up the imaginary components of cos theta plus i sine theta to the nth power. Let's call this expression 2. So let's do an example. When n is equal to 4. And to complete this exercise, I do have to do a binomial expansion of this term here and you can do that however you like uh, I'm going to use Pascal's triangle so I'm going to construct a Pascal's triangle on the right here so for n equals 0 I have 1 n equals 1 I have 1 and 1 for n equals 2 I have 1 2 1 for n equals 3 I have 1 3 3 1 Sorry, that was n equals 3. Now for n equals 4, I have 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. So binomially expanding cosine theta plus i sine theta to the fourth power, I get cosine to the fourth power, cosine theta to the fourth power, plus the coefficient 4, by cosine to the third power of theta by i sine theta plus 6, the coefficient 6, by cosine squared theta. So, so we're ever decreasing the power of cosine by 1 each time and increasing the power of i sine theta 
by 1 each time. So I've got cosine square theta by i sine theta squared. Onto the next line, I get 4 by cosine theta. Decrease that power by 1. Increase i sine theta by a power of 1. So it's i sine theta to the power of 3. And finally, is the coefficient 1 by i sine theta to the fourth power. So this equals cosine to the fourth power remains as it is plus i by 4 times cosine to the third power by sine of theta. So that's the first imaginary component plus now the third term becomes 6 by cosine squared theta by i squared sine theta sine squared of theta. i squared is simply negative 1 and with that I can write the third term as minus 6 by cosine squared theta sine squared theta. The fourth term 4 by cosine theta I've got a i cubed here by sine cubed of theta. i cubed can be expanded to i squared by i. i squared is negative 1. So the fourth term becomes minus i by 4 cos theta by sine cubed of theta plus i to the fourth power by sine to the fourth power. I can write that as i squared by i squared which is negative 1 by negative 1, so that simply reduces to sine to the fourth power. So now to find cosine of the fourth multiple of the angle theta, all I do is collect the real components of the binomial expansion. So I have cosine to the fourth power of theta minus 6 by cos squared of theta sine squared of theta plus sine to the fourth power of theta and to get sine of the fourth multiple of theta all I do is collect the imaginary terms so I have 4 by cos cubed of theta sine theta minus 4 by cos theta by sine cubed of theta. Alright, so this was a really cool application of a complex number theorem to help us find trigonometric identities that we can use for real number problems. And it's an example of how one field of study in mathematics can relate to a totally different field. Now you might like to confirm these results by using the some formulas. I'll leave you to do that as an exercise. But that will conclude this video. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them in the section below this video. Check out my hundreds of other tutorials and playlists to help you with your studies. Till next time, best of luck. I'll see you on the next video.